this light down, keep the back ones on them. What Time Team did 20 years ago is it made archaeology sexy. It really did. It changed people's perceptions. And archaeologists became instantly recognisable. I mean, <laughs> there were certain figureheads that became stars overnight. <laughs> what surprised me is, over the 20 years, that geophysics has become key in our evaluation work. We use a variety of techniques and we use a variety of surveying techniques and it's all filmed on camera for you to see. I mean, we've got such a high profile now <laughs> that we're on front covers of magazines. I mean, 20 years ago, people hadn't heard of archaeological geophysics. Now we've got our own language. We don't talk about anomalies, we talk about blobs. We don't actually talk about geophysics, we talk about geophys. Actually, Tim Darvel, professor at Bournemouth University, he suggested that geophys should be a new word in the English, Oxford English Dictionary. Um, it's still not there, but who knows? I mean, for me, this was the turning point. Some of you may remember back in 1993 when this image on a dot matrix printer came out the back of our van. We had an archaeology detector van in those days. And this was Athelney, the church and monastic complex down in Somerset. English heritage had surveyed this six years earlier, found nothing. We had perfect conditions and I don't think we've looked back. That has changed our lives and that has changed Time Team, I think, quite dramatically. To get That's such Alfred's great church at Athelney. Yeah, such clear results with the resistance survey, seeing the, the church and then all the other remains. I could give a lecture on that, but Tim won't let me. Yeah. We occasionally get things wrong, only occasionally. This is a site we did um, up in Ribchester in Lancashire. Um, we were working on a, a Roman town, a small Roman town, and we were actually looking for a Roman road. Uh, and we did this on the, the sports field. And first three grids with resistance, clear. Uh, rectilinear ditches at right angles to each other and this is where we thought we'd got the Roman road. So after three grids we announced to three million viewers we've got the Roman road, we've got the Roman complex. Foolishly we then went and did another three grids and what we've actually got <laughs> are the white lines of the football pitch, the penalty area, the penalty spot <laughs> but none of that was visible. We were on a playing field. What had happened here, repeated white lining of the pitch, um, it had affected the moisture content. And so what we thought was an apse and so on was actually quite modern. But it serves as a good example. If you only do a small survey, it's difficult to interpret and understand what's going on. The bigger the picture you get, the more likely you'd be able to know what's happening. So the next step that Jimmy's developing really is going beyond the time slices and into actually 3D modelling um, below the ground so that basically you can build up a picture of what's there without digging. Um, and these models, you strip away all the extraneous noise and you just leave the walls and you can actually gauge the thickness, the depth of the foundations And so you can then rotate these models, zoom in, fly around, do whatever, whatever you want. Um, now they look pretty. Well, I think they look pretty. I think they're far more exciting than those little metal bottles or whatever. Um, <laughs> but that's just me. I'm probably sad. Uh, but they also provide a lot of information. Again, I'll move on. Right, this is just summing up. There was a guy, I forget his name, writing in a uh, new scientist a few years ago, having, uh, doing a review of Time Team. 
uh, and this was his sort of conclusion. Um, and this is true, we do actually do science as part of the program, and that's the excitement, or at least I think it's the excitement. Think back to that intact tile kiln. You went from collecting data, getting images on a computer, putting in a trench, and seeing it. That is really exciting. You don't always have to find things, though. That sort of sums it up. And if there's one thing I've managed to do <laughs> in 20 years, it's convinced my old colleague that we're always right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a slightly uh, doctored version. <laughs> it is. Uh, <laughs> if I'd known... I, I, I do actually know what the caption says. Yeah. <laughs>